Welcome to the first unit of IGCSE Computer Science, which is called Data Representation. Now, before we start looking into this particular unit, this video will give you a flavor of the basic fundamentals of computer science. Often students don't know what computer science actually stands for, what is the purpose of the subject. This particular lesson focuses on what computer science is and how computers generally work. Let's start by looking at what computer science actually is. If you ask most people, they'll simply say that it's the study of computers, and that's not entirely inaccurate. However, as a computer scientist, you need to know a lot more. So computer science is the study of computational thinking, which is an approach to solve problems. It's the study of computers and hardware, devices and parts that we can physically touch. It's the study of programming and software, code and instructions that we can write to control that hardware. And it is the study of networking and sharing in this digital age. However, before we start looking at the actual syllabus and what computer science IGCSE is all about, you need to be able to have some basic knowledge of what's under the hood of a typical computer. Now, computers are made of physical parts, and these parts can be touched. They are called hardware, and these are actually powered by electricity. And if you don't have electric current running through them, they just become inanimate objects. On screen, you see a diagram of a basic computer. There are a lot of parts in there, from the CPU to the optical drive to the power supply to the graphics cards to RAM and so on. We're just going to have a brief look at each part individually. Hopefully you know most of this already, but if you don't, carry on watching, and if you do, skip ahead. Let's start with the computer case. A case stores all the parts. It's kind of like the skin on your body. It protects all the parts from dust, and the size depends upon the motherboard. The motherboard is kind of like the skeleton where everything gets plugged in. And the computer case can be made of any type of material, really, even Lego. Most of the time you will see a case and all the components are going to be inside the case. In the case, you will have a fan. Why do we need a fan? Because computer parts run with electric current and that generates a lot of heat. That's basically power. And heat can cause damage to the parts themselves. So fans are used to keep all the parts cool. So within the case itself, there will be a case fan. In addition to that, there will be the motherboard. Now, this is the skeleton, one of the most important components of the computer. And all the other components, including the CPU, the RAM, the hard drive, are plugged into the motherboard. It is the backbone of a computer. The next important component that you need to remember is the central processing unit, or the CPU. This is responsible for all the processing in a computer. It acts like the brain of a computer. Its job is to fetch, decode, and execute commands that you perhaps give the computer. Now, all software is basically instructions. So those instructions need to be fetched, decoded, or translated, and then executed, which means you have to run them. Now, the CPU can get very hot because it does a lot of calculation, often billions of calculations per second. So it needs its own fan, and you normally see the CPU fan stuck on top of the CPU to keep it cool. Another component is the power supply unit. All the parts will need some electric current or some power, and this component provides that power. Standard power supply units normally have around 300 to 500 watts of power. And if you've got a high performance computer, it can output up to 1000 watts of power, and that supplies power to all the components. Even if you have a laptop or a mobile phone, normally you will have a power unit inside it, which could either be a battery or connected to an actual mains electricity socket. The next component we're going to be talking about is RAM. This temporarily stores data that the CPU needs. It's much faster than SSDs. Normally computers have around 8 GB of RAM. Modern systems now include 16 GB or 32 GB of RAM as standard. Remember, all of this is temporary data. So the moment you turn your computer off, the data in the RAM just vanishes. The next important component, which most students are normally familiar with, is the graphics card. This is responsible for producing images on your screen. If the graphics card is inbuilt on the motherboard and not a separate product, it's called the graphics processing unit. The GPU is normally very slow compared to graphics cards because those will have often their own processors or multiple processors and they have to be cooled by fans themselves. So they can run very hot. Hard drive or SSDs are storage devices which offer permanent storage. Now RAM is very fast temporary storage, but what if you want to save the data that you have in RAM? You need some place to store that, and that's the job of a hard drive or an SSD. 
Now, solid state disks or SSDs are electronic devices with no moving parts and magnetic hard disk drives have moving parts where you have platters and read write heads and we'll look at all of that in due course. Most modern computers have around 256 GB to one terabyte of storage space using hard drives or SSD. The final component we're going to be talking about is optical drives. These include CD, DVDs, and Blu-ray drives, which use round disks to permanently store and move data between computers. These are being used less and less these days because digital communication or transmission of the internet is becoming very speedy. However, we still use them for sharing data, selling software, and backup purposes. So you might encounter them, and that's why it's in the syllabus. Of course, computers have other parts as well, like input and output devices like keyboards, mice, trackpads, touchscreens, monitors, printers, sound cards, but these are the main components which are common in most computers. Okay, let's put that aside. Let's look at how humans process data and how that data could be understood by inanimate objects which are just powered by electricity. How do we convert everything that we see in the real world into the digital world? So let's start by looking at how humans process data. Now on screen you see five common ways. We read text, we can understand text, we can understand information through images, sound, touch, smell, and so on. All of this is real world data and all of this is called analog data because it just certainly doesn't go from zero to 100. It increases steadily. For example, the sound of my voice can get louder, but it won't just suddenly get to peak volume and then to silence, it will go through a transition. So I will need to increase my sound to the highest pitch or decrease it down to something small. Now that's analog data. It has lots of continuous values. Computers, on the other hand, process data using electricity. It can be turned on, which is basically a one, and it can be turned off, which is basically a zero. Because it has two values, this is called a binary number system. So it only uses two numbers to represent the entire world. By basically means two in Latin. Our number system is called denary because we use 10 digits, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and combine them to make all the other numbers. For example, 10 is basically one and zero. So the problem we have now is, how do you convert all of this real world analog data, text, images, sound, touch, smell, into binary, which is zero or one? That's the problem. Now you can do some research and find that out. In that case, pause the video so you can find the answer yourself and then compare it to the one that I'm about to show you. In the answer, the words in bold are key terms and you need to make a note of these key terms because these are the ones that you're normally tested on in exams. Process goes like this. Humans deal with analog data, which is a continuous stream of physical data, which commonly occurs in nature. Computers, on the other hand, understand digital data, which is discrete data that can only use two values, zero and one. This is also known as binary. Now, analog data needs to be converted into digital data for a computer to understand that. So this digital data is often stored in registers. And these registers are small components that temporarily store data in a computer. So what happens is that you capture the analog data, maybe using a device like a microphone, and it's converted into electrical signals, which are ones and zeros, and that is then stored in registers. Now the components that process this digital data are logic gates because they control the flow of electricity in a computer. So they allow the ones and zeros to travel from the microphone, perhaps to the registers, and they help with all the processing as well. Our number system is denary, which is a base 10 number system, which means that it uses values zero to nine. Whereas computers understand binary, which is a base two number system with two values or two digits, zero and one. And this is the start of computer science IGCSE. In the very first unit, you will be looking at converting data between denary numbers and binary numbers. And then we're going to look at how we store these binary numbers and what the scale of these binary numbers are, the difference between bits, bytes, kibibytes, bytes, maybe bytes, and so on. And then we will look at how text, images, and sound are all stored in a computer, how we can compress that and we can transmit online. How do we create all these wonderful modern computers and create software which allows us to do seemingly magical things like artificial intelligence, where nowadays you can just type a text prompt and it can generate an entire video for you. That is all possible by manipulating electricity 
and just two numbers, zero and one. And that's going to be our starting point, the conversion in the next lesson. So hopefully you can answer the following questions by the end of this particular lesson. If you can't, then I would suggest rewind the video and have a look. You should be able to explain how computers process data. You should be able to list three common parts of a computer system, apart from fans and PSUs and the computer case as well. Why is binary called binary? What are registers and logic gates? What is the difference between analog data and digital data? That's all for this particular lesson. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.